intelligencesquared.com. Thank you. It takes a long time for me to slow down, right? That's why I need the extra two minutes. So London's climate policy should and is already starting in Beijing, and I'm really pleased that Vicky's here to kind of save me on the third time round. So welcome, Vicky. So let, let, let me just start with a couple of the really obvious facts. Every tonne of carbon counts, and we need an awful lot of them between now and 2020. Most estimates suggest something in the order of 15 to 20 gigawatts mitigated globally between now and 2020 if we want a sort of a 50% chance to stay somewhere below the two degrees before we all begin to fry. So every tonne counts. But the UK is a very small place. You know, total emissions right now is more or less around half a gigaton, rising, it has to be said, about 4% over the last year. And, and if we even manage to mitigate, say, 20% between now and 2020, although my maths are seriously bad, I'm reckoning that that means that we're contributing less than 1% to the overall amount that needs to be mitigated globally over that period to sort of have a chance going forward. So doesn't mean that every tonne doesn't count, but one's got to put the little UK into perspective. Secondly, tonnes do count, and where are they going to come from? And what I'd like to suggest to you here tonight is that actually a lot of the tonnes that the UK is going to mitigate are going to come because of actions in China. And I want to give three simple bullet points to make that point. Firstly, if instead of measuring carbon emissions by production, you measure it by consumption, it turns out that our emissions are an awful lot higher because we don't really produce that much, but we consume a hell of a lot. And a lot of the imports, of course, of high material content that we consume come from China. Actually, China's own plans to reduce its carbon emissions domestically in production means that over the next 10 years, it should well be that many of the imports that we continue to import from China will have dramatically less carbon in it. Hey presto, China policy, carbon mitigation outcome in the UK. Number two, we all know that China is the largest producer of wind turbines, the largest producer of solar panels, and more or less the largest producer of most things these days. The effect in terms of the costs of clean tech here is quite simple. And, and I'll give you a US value just to sort of make the point. Over the last six years, the price of solar panels per kilowatt capacity has fallen in the US from more or less three and a half dollars down to about $1.20. Why? Well, because of the huge volumes that are being produced in China. If we want to install clean energy here, a lot of it's going to be bought out of China and the economies of scale in China mean that we get to buy it cheaper. Hey presto, actions in China lead to carbon mitigation here. And then my third example is really about inward investment. We are, of course, a destination for considerable inward investment. China, despite its huge trade surplus over the past 20 years, has actually overseas invested, invested out very little, currently around $320 billion in total stock. But Premier Wen just two weeks ago announced, in fact, at the World Economic Forum in Dalian in China, that he expects those numbers to triple at least to a trillion dollars within the next five years. A huge increase in outward investment from China and a lot of it in the green tech area. Hey, we turn out to be a destination for their outward investment. They're going to invest in the kind of manufacturing facilities and perhaps the kind of green infrastructure that seems to be difficult to get off the ground right here, right now. China policy, carbon mitigation in the UK. So the question is not so much whether we can teach or influence China. That's actually a fairly absurd <coughs> idea, I have to say. Um, the question is more that China's own policies are going to drive carbon mitigation in the UK, as well as, of course, carbon mitigation in many other countries. So what does that mean? Well, it means, in particular, that one's probably got to think more about economics than one's got to think about climate. Because, of course, in the UK, the question of whether it can take advantage of China's own climate policy depends on 
its own public policies in a range of different areas. I want to give you two rapid quotes, and then I'll tell you where they come from. Thousands of new wind turbines could be built across the UK as part of a £100 billion investment <coughs> that would create hundreds of thousands of jobs. Quote one. Quote two. Subsidies for households to install solar panels are to be slashed by ministers. It was announced today. So the first quote is from Gordon Brown, then Prime Minister. Prime Minister in 2008? I'm not sure if I've got my dates right. He was Prime Minister by that time. And he was announcing a $100 billion pound investment that never happened. Um, today, and it is today, we see in the newspapers, in fact in the IHT as well as the FT and others, um, that this government is busy slashing back many of the investments, many of the feed-in tariffs, many of the other public policies that would have allowed the UK to benefit from not only manufacturing here, not only smart technology here, but all of the imports, lowered price that could come out of China tomorrow. Yeah, so actually, it isn't simply a question of China getting it right and us taking the advantage of it. We also need to have the right policies, but many of them are not really about climate per se, but are about economics. One more quote, although it's out of the US, but I think it's just as relevant to our situation here today. Seven US solar panel makers are to file a suit against China for allegedly using billions of government dollars to reduce the cost of exported panels to the US to below cost price. Today, if you happen to have read your IHT, these are so many ads that we need some kind of reward for this. And similarly, on the 6th of October, the Obama administration advised the WTO of 46 Chinese policies that they consider to be clean energy subsidies. So here we are slashing our own public expenditure. Here we are coming up to Durban and the new climate change discussions without really any hope of mobilizing public expenditure. And actually what we're principally doing is criticizing the Chinese for doing what? For putting public money into reducing the cost of clean tech that we can import and use because we don't seem to be able or willing to spend the money ourselves. It sounds a little strange to us. Two minutes to go. So it's economics. It's not really climate policy. And the question is whether the UK is able not to formulate a climate policy here. And the question is not whether the UK is able to influence China's, in fact, not climate policy, but national economic policy embedded in its new 12th national plan. The question is whether the UK can drive forward the kinds of policies that can take advantage of China, in particular's entry onto the international stage as an exporter of high tech at low cost and as an ov overseas investor. And I just really have kind of two small final points to make and then I'll summarize it together. The first is, as many people today in relation to the US but also in relation to the UK have pointed out, public expenditure in green infrastructure is really the key to pushing forward developments in the UK and elsewhere. We can see Denmark, new government, has just announced carbon mitigation targets of 40% by 2020, wind turbine power of 50% of the global grid, 50% of the national grid by 2020. Germany, just three months ago, announced 100% renewables in the grid by 2030. Whether they can achieve that remains to be seen. But these enormously ambitious moves are all what the UK needs to do, but that doesn't mean that they won't avail themselves of the opportunities that I've already described uh, that are coming out of China. In conclusion, then, I would say, Beijing is increasingly London's de facto policy maker on climate. This isn't a question of whether we should go there. It's not a question of us seeking to influence them. The fact is, is that China is shaping our carbon footprint and could do so very positively if we get our own policies right. But to do so, to do so, and then I'll absolutely bring it to a close, we need to have the economic policies in place that aren't defensive, aren't protectionist, and really invest in the green infrastructure that we need here. Thank you very much indeed. Okay, so I get to be attacked. Right. <laughs> Malcolm and George, please go right ahead for two minutes. Do you have questions? No questions, Your Honor. <laughs> wow, you got a visa. 
I mean, I'll just make a point. I don't want to uh, go too much into what I'm going to say later on, though. That I think there's an awful lot of faith here that the extraordinary rapid growth of Ch Chinese technology is not going to come bumping to a halt at some point. If that doesn't happen, then China will be unique in the history of technology because every other country which has set off on a route and has had enthusiasts telling us how brilliant it's going to be uh, has hit problems which have uh, caused that. And I, I'll suggest that what I think might be missing with this is a recognition that although the technology may be in place in China, and they've certainly got an awful lot of money, uh, I don't believe that China has begun yet to develop the relationship between technology and society which is necessary for sustainable technology in a way that I think we're beginning to do in countries like the UK. And until that happens, I think it would be very, very dangerous for the UK to say we can delegate to China responsibility for our climate policy. I don't think there was a question there. <laughs> <laughs> he admitted there was. Thanks. Thank you.